Hi everyone and welcome to another little video where we're going to be looking at the pages from the book of Judges. Uh, on this page uh, it concludes chapter 1 and begins chapter 2. Um, this first panel has a lot of text and that's because it's just um, it's a big long list of the places that the tribes of Israel didn't manage to conquer. Um, so you know it's like this tribe didn't conquer this place and da da da. And this has a big long list of their failings. Um, but it's not um, a great one to sort of illustrate. So um, here's a lot of text on this one. The first few pages of Judges are just setting up the story. At the bottom, though, the other point that it makes is that they, the Israelites don't um, take, don't kill the Canaanites as they are commanded, but they then take them as slaves. And they, they obviously think this is a brilliant idea to turn their enemies into like a slave army or whatever um, to serve them. Um, but to God, that is not what He wants and not what He commanded. And so, um, you know, I believe that even um, that God, you know, doesn't want that for the Canaanites. You know, he's, he's he wants to clean out the Canaanites. He wants to get rid of their sin. He goes into details of some of the scriptures on all the terrible things that they've been doing. But he wants them gone. And I think to uh, from God's perspective, if if the Israelites kill them, um, God still. Um, those people are still real and exist to God. We, the people, the Israelites themselves on earth in that time might have thought it would be worse to kill them than to make them slaves, but to God that is not the case. So he uh, he doesn't want them to be enslaved. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so this is a record of all their failings. Um, now, the, uh, at the top of the page, this is the, the main part of this um, page. The angel of, of God comes, um, and it says from Gilgal to Bochem, and it talks and it gives delivers a message to them. And what essentially what he says is that you know I was uh, I brought you up out of Egypt. I was with your fathers. I promised to give the land, um, and you were to um, not you were to break down the altars and make no covenants with the people of the land. Um, and it says, but you have not listened to my voice. Why have you done this? There. For I also said I will not drive them out before you, but they will be a thorn in your side, and their gods will be a snare to you. In the images, you can see the people. In the first uh, image, are surprised to see the angel. Then the second, they're listening, and then the third, they're weeping. Now the word bechem is uh, means weeping, and that's why they then, after that, call the place. Uh, like weeping as the the name of the place. Um, what's significant is that um, it introduces the name of the place as Bochem in the narrative. Um, the reason that's important is because it's it, it, in the narrative it's an anachronistic name. So they're saying, oh, it was called. He went to this place called Bochem, but actually it wasn't called that until afterwards. The reason that's significant is not because of what's here, but because in other parts of the Bible there's place names that come up and actually they are um, people think oh you know this can't be because this place doesn't exist yet um, particularly in the exodus the cities that the um, Hebrews who are enslaved make one of them is called Ramses and because of that people say oh it must be Ramses is the god the the, uh, the pharaoh of the exodus um, but it's I think that that is a anachronistic name that they've that they've said you know, when they wrote it, they said, you know the place called Ramses now? Yes, well, we built it, but it wasn't called, it potentially wasn't called that at the time. Um, it's just an example of where it's clearly not the name at the time, and so that's all I'm pointing out, is that sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean the Bible's wrong, it's just using the name that would make sense to the readers when the person who wrote it wrote it. <laughs> The other important thing about that verse is that it says that the angel came up from Gilgal to Bochem, and it's like, you know, when I read it and when I was reading commentaries and stuff, it's like, did he walk from one to the other? Did he fly? You know, like, why is it saying that he went from this place to this place? Um, but what it actually means, um, I believe, after reading lots of commentaries, is that it's saying the angel that was in Gilgal came to Bochem, and the angel, and the reason it says that is because in Joshua, um, when Joshua goes to scout out the uh, Jericho, he meets the angel of the Lord then, and the angel he says, you know, take off your shoes on holy ground, etc. And that is around the vicinity of Gilgal, which is on the outskirts of um, Jericho. So I think it's saying 
that angel that was in Gilgal comes to Bochem. So that, I think that's what the meaning of, of this bit is. Um, <clears throat> and then, okay, and then the people weep. Next, the, we have the verse, which is what I was talking about in the first video, where it says, When Joshua had sent out the pe sent the people away, the children of Israel went to their inheritance to possess the land. And so basically, it's saying, oh, it's, it's telling you that Joshua is doing things, so he's alive. Um, I think then that all the stuff that's basically up to this point is before the time of Joshua. And, and, and this is sort of the point where he's... Um, saying go to your inheritance which obviously happens in the book of Joshua that picture that I've drawn there gets used in the book of Joshua then to, for this part sorry I didn't mean to do that okay um, and you can see some of the elders of the, the tribe um, in the image next it says then Joshua oh, well Joshua son of Nun servant of Yahweh died being 110 um, he's buried in the borders of Timnatara, and and it, and it just tells you about that. You've got the picture of Joshua on the left-hand side. Let me just see if I can see it on yours. Um, and uh, this is the picture again that we use at the very end of the book of Joshua when Joshua dies. The other thing you can see in the image is uh, going left to right there are skulls in the background again it's just to remind us that you know it's that theme of okay, death you know Joshua dies but then it tells us about the children of Israel did what, that which is evil in the sight of God served the Baals abandoned God and their fathers um, bowed down before the idols and so you've also got the idols in the background um, if I move it down a bit you can see them there's this one in the middle, which is sort of like it, it's actually the the, the the real one. It's f it's flat and it's like this gold or copper, I can't remember, um, sort of flat idol that's kind of um, triangle shaped. And the one next to it though is it's like it's one from a mask, a mask of Baal. If I bring up the internet, you can see that one. It looks like this. It's a mask, a cultic mask that they found at Hatzel. Uh, and the other thing you can see below is the pe the, the the people of Israel, the fighters, um, being killed in battle because it says that um, that God abandoned them in his anger, and when they served the Baals and Ashtoreth, and um, delivered them to the hands of the raiders and the plunderers, and and um, no longer stand before their enemies. And then it says, and the, and the people were in great distress. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see the little silhouette of a lady with a um, man who's got an arrow through his chest. Um, it, <laughs> it, they, you don't, can't see as much as I would have hoped in that picture, but that's because there was so much text to fit in there. That's uh, one of the first um, sort of pages that I did, so um, you know, you can perfectly get all the spacing right on that one. Um, but the man who stands, um, you know, above uh, there is a Canaanite warrior so he has Canaanite style clothing um, earring big earrings his dark skin his like afro like hair that's tied back with um, this you know tie he's got a cloak and, uh, and a Canaanite style sword as well um, and the next time we're going to be looking at the the rise of the judges and the uh, more of the when people have done wrong against God and off the hill. So um, join us next time. Um, uh, next week though we'll also be starting our Kickstarter on the 6th of March, 8pm uh, UK time. So don't miss that. Go to web webbiblecomic.com if you want to see it and, uh, and link up there and you can back the Kickstarter for the Gospel of Matthew. Thanks for watching.